Welcome back to the GTN show brought to you by Amp Human. As always, we hope you are managing to keep safe and well during these tough times. But Heather and myself are here today to give you your feel of triathlon and let you know what has gone on in the world of triathlon this past week. We have got Ironman just announcing their new Kona qualification schedule. World Triathlon have also just announced some rather big changes to their calendar. Jan Fredeno, well, he probably trumps us all with his indoor training efforts. And then Zwift have also just announced and launched possibly the biggest triathlon spectacle of this year. Meanwhile, we're gonna be checking in on you guys and some of the videos and photos you've been sending in to us during these times, and also checking in with the pros to see what they've been getting up to during this quarantine and isolation. Hi guys, right, I'm gonna start us off with Try News. And we have an announcement from Ironman regarding the Kona World Championships and qualification. And I know a lot of people have been wondering what's gonna happen with so many events being canceled or postponed during this period. Well, they have extended the qualification period by just one week. So instead of ending on the 23rd of August, it's now going to end on the 30th of August. And that includes three extra races that wouldn't normally have been in this year's qualification. So that's Ironman Vichy, Ironman Kazakhstan and Ironman Penticton. And each of those races are being given a total of 60 slots to award for qualification places for 2020 for Kona. So it really does open things up a little bit. And some events that have been postponed during this period to still fall within that qualification period, so anytime up until the 30th of August, will have their normal qualifying slots that they would have been given. But if your event or an event you might have entered has now been postponed to beyond the 30th of August, well, that will mean qualification at that event will then just give you points or give you a place for the following year. So it will mean that you might have to look at your calendar and change what your plans are, if you are still planning on going to Kona, that is. And then there's a whole other um, slot for the legacy athletes. So those athletes who have completed 12 Ironman races have the opportunity to apply for a legacy slot and that then goes into a draw when you get the opportunity to race at Kona without having to actually qualify at right. Well, I might have said now that any athlete on that waiting list will get a slot. So that's great news for the legacy athletes, but who knows what's going to happen when it comes around to Kona itself. It's obviously not just Ironman races that have been cancelled or postponed at the moment. The World Triathlon Series has come to a halt, as has the qualification process for the Olympic Games. Now, obviously, the Olympics has been postponed by a year. The qualification period has been frozen until at least the 30th of June. Well, World Triathlon have now announced that they are coming up with a new selection criteria or policy with some amendments. Some athletes have already qualified, some were still hoping to. So they need to make sure they've got some rules that are going to be fair to give everyone the best possible chance and those have now been put to the IOC and the IPC and waiting to get approved and then it will be announced to the athletes and the coaches exactly what these new rules are going to look like. Some slightly less positive news now from Ironman as last week they announced that there have been two drug related suspensions from athletes who actually tested positive at around Kona and the build up to the world championships last year. First was actually a pro Daniel Sapanov from Ukraine who has competed in three Olympic Games 2004, 2008 and 12 and he's even won a European Cup title. Well, he finished 24th in Kona last year but as a result of testing she showed that he had signs of EP. So he's been given a four year suspension. And then there was an age grouper who also tested positive for some anabolic steroids. Uh, that was Brazil's Rodrigo Tavares, who came second in his age group, the 35 to 39. Well, not great news, but at least they are being found. I don't know about you, but I'm missing racing triathlon, but also watching professional triathletes race. So you might be pleased to hear that Zwift are launching the new Z Pro Tri Race Series. And it's gonna be a series of bike races for the pro triathletes, ranging from short course all the way up to long course athletes. So we're gonna have a real mix in there. It's a 23 kilometer race. It's over two laps on the Astoria Line 8 circuit in Zwift, New York. And it's gonna be happening every Wednesday afternoon. So if you're watching the show just after it's gone out, it'll be happening 
happening around about now. It's three o'clock British summer time. Starting off with the women's race, 45 minutes later, we'll have the men's race. And some of the athletes are still keeping it coy as to who's signing up, but expect the likes on the women's field of Flora Duffy, Lucy Charles Barkley, and Holly Lawrence battling it at. And then the men's side, we've heard rumors that Tim Don is going to be racing along with Martin Van Rill and Lionel Sanders, who's fresh off the win from his recent e-racing. So it's going to be some exciting racing to watch and it's planned to be happening every week. So you put that in your diaries. Okay, I know a lot of us are upping our indoor training at the moment, but what about doing a full Ironman in the comforts of your own home? Well, that is what the Kona World Champion Jan Frodeno did over the Easter weekend. So he had a jet in his pool and managed to swim the 3.8 kilometers. Then he jumped onto his bike for another 180 kilometers and finished off with the 42K run for the marathon. And by his own admission, he had some fairly kushti transitions. Obviously, he was at home and he wasn't racing anyone other than himself. Himself, but he still completed it in an incredible time of 8 hours, 33 minutes and 39 seconds. And obviously, that part is very impressive, but it's more the fact of the fundraising that was behind it. So he was trying to raise money for the local healthcare institutes in Girona, where he is currently based, as well as the Loria Sports Foundation. And when we last checked, he had raised over 200,000 euros, so over 175,000 pounds. And I think that number was continuing to rise. So a really great effort by Jan in both senses. It does seem that a lot of people are keen to really push themselves both mentally and physically at the moment with various challenges. We have seen many marathons that have been run in backyards or triathlons that have been set up. Some people have even run a marathon on their balcony. Well, Mike Vade, who lives in Hong Kong, has taken it to another level as he has done a triathlon Everesting. So climbed the height of Mount Everest throughout a triathlon. Obviously, he wouldn't have gained any altitude throughout the swim, but then he used the bike and the run to complete this mammoth task. It took him an elapsed time of over 55 hours and he did have friends to help him along the way but still an impressive achievement nonetheless. Right, we thought we'd finish up with a new piece of tech we spotted called Gear Tracking. Now, it's an app that you have on your phone and then can be synced to your normal training software. And it helps you to actually measure the mileage or the time that you're using certain pieces of kit. And as triathletes, we're obviously using huge amounts of kit and it can be sometimes quite hard to know when something might need replacing or repairing, especially when it comes to running shoes. Well, this will do the hard work for you. And it sounds quite interesting, something I might need to look into. It's now time for the GTN poll. And off the back of the news from the Ironman World Championships and their extended qualification period, we thought we would ask you, are you still going to try and qualify for Kona if you were already? You can answer a simple yes or no by clicking on the poll just up here. And do leave your comments in the comments section below as to whether your race plans might be changing as a result of what we're going through right now. Anyway, now it's time for the results from last week's poll. When off the back of Lionel winning that e-race on Zwift, we asked you, do you think he would win the same race in real life? And it really got the comments going. And most of you saying that bike handling does play a major part in bike racing. And yes, I agree. And the poll reflected that as 75% of you said, no, he wouldn't win the same race in real life. 25% of you said yes. Well, I'm back in now for the race news, which we should probably rename to the virtual race news, given, well, that's all we've got at the moment. But some really exciting racing, to be fair. This weekend, we had the Ineos race, which was closed to the Ineos team. So we had pretty much every member of the team racing there on Zwift up out to Zwift. And it was actually Rowan Dennis that made an early move, pushing an impressive 450 watts to take the victory. Although he did have to put a little bit of a surge in partway up as he noticed he had a certain Cameron Worth clinging onto his wheel in second place. Knowing that Cameron can push a pretty high wattage consistently for a long period of time, he knew he had to make his move early on. So he put that surge in and then it enabled him to settle back into that constant TT power that Rowan is very good at. He took the win. Cam Worth had to settle for fourth in the end, but still flipping impressive considering who he's up against. Notably, we had Chris Froome back in sixth, two minutes and 33 seconds 
down on Dennis. But in also other virtual racing news, I thought we'd catch up on the Ironman virtual racing this week, actually over the Olympic distance 5150 kind of format. Now this was actually open to not just pros, but also the amateurs and age groupers. And we had 23,000 people signed up to this from over 130 different countries. The format for this was actually a three kilometer run, 40 kilometer bike and a 10 kilometer run. You could do that in whatever order you want wanted you could do it back to back or with a nice break between you could do the bike first whatever you like the only criteria was that you did it between friday at 6 p.m gmt time through till sunday at midnight gmt time and in the pro racing we did have a very exciting race both on the women's and men's side it was lauren brandon that took the win we had very closely chelsea sodaro just behind michelle vesterby and then a little bit further back we had rachel olsen on the men's side now we just had literally a minute or so separating all four of these men sam long took the win sam appleton in second tim mcdonnell in third and david mcnamee and fourth. Well, just when you thought there couldn't possibly be any more virtual racing, Super League have stepped in with an all-star lineup in the Zwift Classics races, along with some of cycling's elite. So now we also have the likes of Alistair Brownlee, Christian Blumenfeld, Vincent Louis, and Rachel Klammer all getting stuck in, just to name a few. Now, this actually started last week with the men's race. It was over a 24.7 kilometer course featuring the famous Box Hill climb. And it was Alistair Brownlee we actually saw towards the front of the race for a majority of it and kind of instigated the main breakaway, which also saw Martin Van Riel making his way into. But as the pace intensified, the two of them kind of rather tactfully sat in, whether that was optional or not, I don't know, but they did do very well. It was Martin Van Riel that came out on top, released from the triathletes, finished just outside the top 10 in 11th. Uh, Brownlee was in 34. Font Saint Louis finished in 58th. Ben Knut 71st, and then Hayden Wild in 80th. Over on the women's side, well, they had a pretty tough time because we had two-time Olympian turn up, Ashley Mullen, Mormon Passio. She absolutely blew the field apart, so much so there was about a minute 20 between first and 10th place. It was the Italian, Ilaria Zane, who managed to make her way into the chase pack. At one point, they managed to claw back to around 20 seconds on the lead group, actually. But again, in the final couple of kilometers, that race was blown apart. Ilaria Zane managed to finish in 26th. Leone Periolt finished in 14th. Of Cassandra Brogrand in 47th, um, Georgia Taylor Brown 65th, and Taylor Spivey in 81st. But if you are interested in watching these races, you can watch them live. The men are back in action on the 17th of April, but this time it's going to be in a team format in the Richmond Challenge. Well, I'm the lucky one that gets to go through all your photos and videos that you've been sending into us and you have not disappointed. We've got loads of fun home improvisations for the training when you're in this self-isolation, lockdown, whatever you've got in your current country or state. Now, Matthias here from Ecuador, he said, finding a way to get some swim sessions done. Now, all I've got to say is got to be careful there with diving into a swimming pool with an elastic band attached to you could go very badly wrong. But I love this next one. This one comes in from Pablo. This is, he's from London and he's done a little stop motion movie for us. Drafting.
Well, we love stop motion here on GTN, so thanks ever so much for sending that in and going to all that effort. Um, we're trying to find a bit of time to make our own little stop motion triathlon video, so hopefully stay tuned. If you fancy getting creative, make your own, send it in again using that photo uploader. Next one here from Junior, and he's from Newport Beach, and said, we usually do a local Sunday morning coffee shop run, but with the safer at home restrictions. We had a little family time in the garage and of course catching up on the latest GTN episode. And I assume that's his partner and dog alongside him there. It looks like a lovely setup actually. Um, next one from Royston, is, he's come from Camberley. He said, solar run as per the guidelines. Um, chasing the 5K PB. He said a long way to go. So I assume he's perhaps following our 5K challenge. Whether it's mine or Heather's, I don't know. But he's posted a 25 58 so just under the 26 minutes so fantastic effort you could see also got some gloves on if you're going through gates so pretty good i've seen quite a few people doing that for their runs for here in the uk we do one bit of exercise per day so not a bad idea if you're going through gates um next one brilliant one from vernon he's um said he's just locked in his backyard uh, running with pirelli and that's the tire, I'm guessing. Um, but that's a good idea. Yeah, putting a bit of resistance on the running. Final one though, and this one really made me chuckle. I love this one. It's come from Andreas. Um, I'm not sure on the pronunciation of this, Lutzweiler. Um, he said, my wife surprised me with this bib for my first Ironman virtual racing. Um, as you can see, it says Ironman 70.3 Lutzweiler. So where he lives. Um, and it's got his name, number one, male category 30 to 34. It's brilliant, such a good job. Shame the ink slightly ran out on the, uh, on the red, but I love the effort you've gone to. So thanks ever so much for sending all of those in. Please keep them coming using the photo uploader. Link is on screen right now, or you can find it in the description below. Right, it's now time for us to get nosy and see what the pros are up to. And we'll be keeping an eye on their social accounts and dug out a selection from Instagram. We've obviously mentioned Jan Fredino with his mega challenge, but just before that, he did announce new bike day and we love a new bike here at GTN. And this one is pretty special. He does have the three gold dots for his three wins at Kona. You can take a closer look at that one um, in your own time, but it is obviously the Canyon CF SLX TT bike and it looks fast, even on the Wahoo Kicker. Adding a bit of lightheartedness again, I know I included a similar post last week, but this is a new one from Nikki Bartlett. She is still going in her Spider-Man run suit. And I just think it's great to see something lighthearted and making people smile. So great work, Nikki. Do keep it up and keep sharing those posts and also just sharing your energetic vibe as you go out on your runs. Um, and this final one for this week comes from Richard Murray and his new training setup in the Netherlands with his wife, Rachel Klammer. And he has a pretty impressive barn with proper barn doors that open up to the countryside. He's got all sorts in there. So I think he'll be all right in this lockdown for the time being an incredible setup there. Moving on to GTN's caption competition. And we scraped all the way back to 2008 for Ironman New Zealand for last week's caption photo. And it looks like a good party, I liked it. There was a, a nice selection of caption suggestions and I've narrowed it down to these four. So we have Amandine Dury who shouts, no, they touched my face. I would be the same with cobwebs. I hear you on that one. Uh, we also have Beach Finner. Oh no, which one is the right finish line? Yeah, it could be confusing. Um, then Lord Burt comes in with, I was doing good on the run, but then got a little tied up. But our winner this week goes to Constantine Drukliev says, when you try to train with multiple elastic bands at the same time. I think it's quite a few people doing some elastic band workouts at home, so I'm sure people can relate to that one. But well done, Constantine. Do get in touch and we will get a GTN cap out to you. And for this week's caption photo, we've gone even further back into the archives, all the way to 2003 for the World Triathlon Champs in Queenstown. Well, do leave your caption suggestions in the comment section below for your chance to win a GTN swim cap. And we might be coming towards the end of this week's show, but there's still plenty more to look forward to this week. Mark's doing a feature on why you should keep a training diary. We've also got our live, so we've got GTN Track Thursday when I'll be doing a live run session, which I would love you to join me with. That's going to be Thursday evening. And on Tuesday evening, British summertime, Mark will be doing the GTN cycle commute as well. And with all of this, 
this indoor training, you might be in looking for some new indoor training kit. Well, check out the GTN shoppers. There are some brilliant indoor training bundles to be found there. If you've enjoyed this, give us a like and subscribe to our channel. And before you go, there's a couple of videos you might like to take a look at. One is, are cushioned running shoes making you injured? You can find that just down here. And if you want to see an in-depth analysis of my swimming stroke with my old swim coach, you can find that just here.